Hello. Here we are again. I'm trying a little bit different camera setup. I hope that works. And yeah, you're watching the Companion of Discomfort and my name is Michael. I didn't forget it this time and that makes me very happy. I'm getting better at stuff. Yay. Um, anyway, so the whole world is basically going crazy about the baby assassins. I've mentioned them in another video where I said that the director's movies are not necessarily all connected, even though similar characters show up or something. And yeah, because of all this uh, hype and all the potential fun and further connections between the movies that actually exist, I thought I should just watch everything he made and talk about it. So we're just gonna start at the beginning and talk about his first movie. But before we get to that one, let's talk about two or three facts about him. There's not that much about him to say because he's very very young. He was born on January 18th in 1969. Yeah, his name is Yugo Sakamoto and he's from Kyoto and started there making movies. So quite a lot of his movies actually set in Kansai. That means like the area around Kyoto, Osaka and so on. And he graduated the um, uh, Kyoto University of Art and Design and um, his uh, student movie, Bleh, that's actually called B, but that's Bleh, like exactly the sound, uh, is not just what we're going to talk about here today, but yeah, it was basically the first time he um, he was noticed by the public, especially at the uh, Gakusei Zankoku Egasai, that's usually translated as the Student Splatter Movie Festival. And um, yeah, this movie played there and he got some recognition. So his next movie, A Hangman's Knot, which is actually not his next movie, there's something in between that we're going to talk about in the next video. Um, played at the Kanazawa Film Festival in 2017. So the uh, first one, Bay, was in 2016. And in 2017, he won the award for the um, Best Newcomer Director. And his um, commercial film debut mm -hmm. was a film called Family Wars. Um, which is quite interesting because I feel like this first student film, B, uh, looks much, much better than Family Wars. Like, F Family, Family Wars is very fun, but it looks so bad. It looks more like a student film than his previous movies. And what's skipped here is another film that's uh, not really in the uh, like several movies that were skipped here. Let, let's go through the um, filmography according to uh, Wikipedia. So first we have in 2016 Bay, then we have 2017 Pun, which uh, is in a regard interesting because he co-directed it with um, a woman called uh, Nagiko Tsuji, who plays one of the lead roles in Bay. And um, they made another movie together in 2017 that's impossible to get. That's called A Crazy Island and seems to be some kind of idle film. And I have no idea. I found a trailer and I found the poster and I have no idea where this movie might be findable. So if anyone has it, uh, I would love to see that. It looks very strange. Um, yeah, and in the same year, he made two more movies. One is A Slaughter Jab. I'm sorry for the title. That's uh, not my choice of words, but um, 
Ja, yeah, dat uh, is een feature film. So, probably his first feature film. It shows up here in the list uh, even higher than uh, Crazy Island. And another short movie that's called uh, Shudarando. And I haven't seen that yet, but I know where to find it, so I will uh, watch it when it's time to make a video about it. Uh, after this, we mentioned Hangman's Knot and Family Wars, and from there starts basically the part of the filmography that people know. So in 2019, we have the legendary Hitman Kunioka, and in 21 he made three movies one is a janitor one is the yellow dragon's village and the first baby assassins these are all available i think on tubi or at least they're somehow available in english with subtitles everything before this including legendary hitman kunioka is not available in english so far my change so much hype as he gets i hope at least like the Kunioka movies, um, should show up. Um, yeah, so the three movies in one year, and then in 2022 he made Green Bullet, which is basically a sequel to uh, legendary hitman Kunioka, and yeah, that's and then followed by Baby Assassin's two and three basically and um, there are some other things in 2019 he worked on a tv show that's called in english unfinished i haven't watched that yet i will but there are some some directors that are very mm, let's say there were some pretty nasty scandals around them and i don't feel very encouraged to watch it i so there's a movie version and a serious version. I will probably watch the full show, that's 10 episodes, but I'm not particularly looking forward to it. And before and after Baby Assassins 2, he made two Kunioka spin-offs, uh, legendary Hitman Kunioka, uh, Kunioka Gaiden, Kunioka Tsuas, and then Osaka and North Osaka and Kyoto. And those are pretty hard to get because they're like super, super independent movies. And I think at least for the second one of these, he sent out the Blu rays himself and stuff. And it's, I've got some posts, they're very lovely. But um, this is stuff that's not for everyone. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, yeah, in between there's another short movie, 2022, that's Heaven's Rush, that's on, on, uh, that's on YouTube. And another thing that's on YouTube is Kunioka uh, BBC, that's a two-part mini-series he made in cooperation with a fashion label that's called um, Black Brain Closing. It's cute, it's 18 minutes, there's some good action, you get some... Kunioka and some yeah, gang fights. It's, it's fine. It's available on YouTube. So just watch it if you want. Very easy to find. And yeah, Baby Assassin's 3 played some festivals, had its premiere in the USA. So some people already watched it. I'm very jealous. And um, the show Baby Assassin's Every Day will start in September in Japan on TV and I guess there's already some like English language uh, artwork that's been around on Twitter so I guess it will sooner or later come uh, in English as well but I'm just gonna watch it it will be on I think it will be on you next in Japan Besides playing on TV Tokyo, which I don't know if I can get it here, but Unix is no problem. So I will just watch it on Unix and be happy that I can see it. So anyway, it's a quite interesting filmography. And one of the reasons why I want to make this here and why I'm not so hyped about this TV show is that 
basically he's an auteur as you would uh, say like he has his own style and identity and you can see ideas like traveling from one movie to another and you can see his thought process he tries some stuff in this movie um, keeps going in that movie and that's super interesting and just to, to see how he evolved as a director and so on and that's super, super fun super interesting and in my opinion i have some things about the baby assassins 2 that i don't like so much there's some elements um, that i didn't enjoy the second time around and i feel like after having watched his previous movies it will be easier for me to appreciate some things that i considered shortcomings it might not be so much shortcomings but just more like his uh, trademark style so if you dive into the stuff deeper um I, for, for, for me at least i mean some some people just love these movies as they are and they don't really need anything else but um i can totally see too that people who love baby assassins will hate the older stuff because it's really so far ahead so much ahead it's really disgusting disturbing <laughs> nasty evil filmmaking yeah uh it's very entertaining <laughs> um we will talk about some pretty disgusting disturbing stuff here so if you are maybe a little sensitive to descriptions of horrible scenes in movies um maybe it's not so interesting for you but yeah let's start in 2016 with b b yeah, it's a very cute movie. I watched it for the second time today because the first time confused me a lot. The whole movie just seemed to be completely random and um, just like daily life in a completely perverted world where violence is just a very casual thing that you do but as it turned out the first time around i was seemingly very very tired and i yeah can't really i couldn't really understand what's going on so so far a little bit ahead before we talk about the story um the first time I watched it I think I struggled a bit because the character introduction is just happening so there are people who do stuff and you don't know who they are or how they are related and um, they're like two couples and it's a little bit hard to uh, who is with who and the first this girl is with guy and then the other guy comes on a bicycle so she jumps on the bicycle goes with her and it's a little bit um confusing so it smells a little bit like first time director um where probably things made totally sense in their head but maybe not for the audience but if you watch it again and you actually pay attention it's all pretty clear and easy to understand so i guess i was just um tired and uh, not ready for this type of filmmaking uh, totally fine works very well um but yeah for, for some of the whole what's 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 going on here it's felt like a random series of um events and i since this other movies sometimes feel like that as well um yeah especially uh the slaughter jab but uh, that's fun too <laughs> um now what this movie is about is um uh, nice little love story and it's filmed for the most part like a romance movie with some little bit more artistic shots a little bit nice music and atmosphere but it starts out with a guy 
killing a woman on the playground and then we meet this we have a little jumping around time we have two couples um one couple has a baby and this guy keeps asking friends for some money to support him and uh yeah like you do if you don't have money and a baby is coming and one night he meets one of his friends and sees him casually killing someone so he's like hey come on i won't tell the police but some money please yeah give me some money and things get out of hand from here so far to the story um in the cast we have some people who we see again several times we have the mentioned um nagi kotsuji who um yeah co-directed uh, this other movie pun that means brad and who uh, was actually in the first baby assassins i don't remember which role she played but i will get back to that and she was in slaughter jet as well so yeah she's a returning uh, face here then we have kengo yoshi who is in quite some movies uh, made by um sakamoto but nothing else he's in this uh, shura rando uh, he's in uh, kunioka bbc is in slaughter jab family wars a hangman's not and legendary hitman kunioka and um, another one that's worth mentioning is uh, oh no it's three, three more we have uh, takuya matsumoto who has been in basically all bigger sakamoto movies and some other stuff as well as a forgiven children which i didn't like so much but he's in the uh, kuniba spin-off movies as well uh, he's in yellow dragons village family wars all this stuff so if you have watched some sakamoto movies you might have seen him but he's not in baby assassin so maybe not there another one who you might have seen in baby assassins even though his role must be very 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 small there is uh, masayuki ino he basically plays kunioka in all those kunioka movies and some other stuff he's in the short movie heaven's rush and he's plays some small smaller roles in, in various movies i guess one of the more popular is a uh, tokyo dragon chef uh, but yeah in, in yellow dragons village he's as well so you might have seen him and another one is Yu Yasuda, who I think is probably the most fun in these early Sakamoto movies because he always plays the most fucked up uh, psychopath. And um, yeah, I've seen him in some other stuff as well especially in you Irius ninja girl and um what was the title here wonderful paradise by masashi yamamoto both lovely movies and uh yeah he's uh probably my favorite actor in all these old old sakamoto movies because yeah he always has like crazy face piercings and plays the craziest people a very, very entertaining guy and yeah like i said this movie it is pretty short it's like 37 38 minutes long and we follow this couple who gets asked for money and yeah things turn out that it's very horrible so from now on some spoilers if you don't want to know more about the story it's a good good movie you, you can watch it if you mm, don't mind crazy stuff stuff but um yeah to get a little bit deeper into this insanity that follows like this guy goes home to his girlfriend and she's angry because he got caught killing and now he's supposed to pay some money to this other guy but she yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take care of it so they call them and they say hey we're gonna come give you some money and they go there have dinner together and she just poisons the guy and he uh strangles the girl and they make it look like a double suicide 
and it's followed by uh, his friends trying to take revenge and uh, yeah basically in the end everybody dies and uh, just the guy who casually kills a woman on the playground in the beginning he just gets away seemingly oh, but uh, good for him and yeah, it's a very strange movie because it always plays with this um, romance movie style and suddenly erupts into this extreme violence. You get some pretty okay fight scenes, I guess okay for, for what it is. It's a student movie. So in the beginning there's one scene where the protagonist um, attacks another guy who um, harasses his uh, girlfriend and you can see he throws him on the ground and punch punching in the fa face from behind but you, you can see he's just punching to the ground and uh, this yeah it's an amateur movie totally fine totally okay uh, later there's a, a pretty fun action scene with uh, Masayuki Ino, who uh, basically does all the action in uh, earlier Sakamoto movies and he does it pretty well and I hope he will uh, come back in one of the Baby Assassins movies or the TV show or whatever because uh, I think he deserves uh, more than just being the uh, yeah, B product guy. <laughs> um, now there's a pretty fun toilet fight scene and it establishes something that Sakamoto will do in following movies quite a lot where people here in this case like two, two guys just grab each other and start stabbing 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 that crazy stabbing mayhem and um, that will happen quite a lot in his movies I guess because it's quite uh, crazy excessive and easy to shoot because you just need fake knives where the blade disappears and you can just step away. Um, yeah, and anyway, the, one of his early trademarks when he directs action. I think he didn't have an action director here already. Like later he tries several people for his movies. Of course, most famous... Um, for baby assassins, uh, Sonomura Kensuke, yeah, uh, who basically elevated everything Sakamoto does. I, I, I don't want to say that Sakamoto can't direct action, but Sonomura is a different level. But here you, you, you can see early tries of implementing action into this and um, yeah, it works so well here because, like I said, you have this basically romance movie about this couple who just likes to kill people. And um, yeah, then you get these bursts of violence and uh, it always switches between um, yeah these slightly artistic romance movie shots and a little bit more horror movie shots you suddenly get horror movies, sound effects, and um, yeah, it's an interesting genre switch that permanently happens, um, which is something he basically got quite famous for, I guess, in his later movies, because I think Agenita and um, Yellow Dragon's Village do something very similar because they establish one story and then some there's some turning point and it switches into something completely different and here it's basically the same you start in this romance movie it turns into hey we start killing people and suddenly it becomes a revenge movie because then the action guys show up and suddenly it's an action movie and that's pretty similar to a janitor and yellow dragon's village where you have something for the uh, in Agenata it's first uh, like a Yakuza movie, in Yellow Dragon's Village it's first more like a horror movie and both switch into action movies after some time. I guess it's not too much spoiler. 
um, especially because you watch Sakamoto movies because usually you want an action movie so I guess it's uh, fine um, yeah so we got some early trademarks here we have some like quite ambitious filmmaking going on like I said this looks much much better than uh, Family Wars which seriously just looks like trash um, yeah can't say any other way um, so yeah this is quite quite impressive for um, debut maybe not the greatest debut I've ever seen but uh, pretty good good start um, you can see his handwriting all over the place a little bit messy writing is very similar to his other movies and uh, yeah it's a good thing to watch and maybe you should give it a try if you are able to find it and um, speak maybe Japanese because as far as I know there's not even a fan sub nothing like like fan subbers don't care about his movies so if there's no official release you won't be happy here but I, I guess maybe with all the hype now it might change at some point or there might be more releases uh, but yeah anyway if you can uh, speak Japanese or you just don't care about what the people say then you might as well hunt down the DVD and give it a try it's a uh, very worth watching but I, I will say that about basically all his movies because I think they're all very worth watching they're not as good as his newer movies but uh, very interesting and we will pick up on some things that we said here and see how that evolves into the other movies and what's going on there and um and the next one will be pun so not the frying pan but uh the bread which is a very very different thing because like i said it's uh, co-directed with Nagi Kotsuji and it's way more of a comedy as far as I remember it's been a while since I watched that um, but uh, we will find out I will rewatch it very soon and then we will come back here and talk again so thank you for watching thank you for probably more listening to me because there's not much to see except for my face and uh, some of the decoration changed over there We've got now here uh, Fires on the Plane by Shinya Tsugamoto. We have Shadow of Fire by Shinya Tsugamoto. And Chime by Kiyoshi Kurosawa. And uh, Shadow of Fire is getting an um, English language release by Third Window Films very soon. Uh, you should get it. It's a fantastic movie. You should already have seen Fires on the Plane because it's a absolutely incredible movie and a uh, chime over here in a different movie i talked about it's um hilariously bad um release strategy as an nft and seemingly the production company agreed that that was a bad idea and so now it got a regular cinema release which i very much appreciate because it's a tremendous film and so it should be seen by many people and not just illegally on the internet because it was released in such a way that nobody cares about so good things happening i guess uh, nobody wants to try to release movies as nfts again and um NFTs have been a bad idea for many many years so don't don't do it anyway thank you very much I'll see you again soon I guess I will hopefully get the series of Sakamoto movies done quite quickly and uh, let's see what the bread brings bye